All right, so I'm gonna make some sirloins today. But that's not what we're gonna talk about in this video. We're gonna talk about a few things. But one of those things is gonna be salt. I'm out. But I just got some more in. 18 minutes, 370 on those. Salt can get a little expensive too. If you're buying them one little bottle at a time. Thankfully, Redmond sells 25 pounds of salt. So I can get the salt that I need and it lasts a long time and you save a lot of money this way. So you can refill your salt shakers, some healthy real sea salt, ancient sea salt. I mean, if we're gonna do all this extra effort to stay healthy, we might as well use the best stuff. Now I'm ready to go again. Go ahead and make some water. And I remember I talked about in the first video how I add salt to my water. And I said that I do 20 turns on the shaker, but they're not full turns. They're more like quarter turns. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, 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 19, 20. Really more like a third of a turn because I saw the real salt label come around every three turns. So when I got my blood work back in August of last year, my sodium level was 138 MMOL slash L. I don't know what MMOL slash L stands for, but either way, the number's 138. When I got my blood work back in March of this year, after I had been adding salt to everything for about two months, my sodium level was 138. So my sodium level didn't change at all after going from doing no salt to adding salt to everything I, I consume. And I think that was pretty amazing considering I went from adding nothing to adding so much. You would think that it would go way up. So I woke up this morning and I decided, I don't like having to fix even a little hair. Decided I'm gonna go ahead and clip all this off myself. Hope I did a good job. A lot cooler in this South Georgia heat. I've also gotten to where I don't necessarily need sparkling water. I was out and about traveling and I didn't have any sparkling water, but I had my bottle. So I bought some purified water and put it in my bottle. And I always keep some salt in these little salt shakers that I take with me so that I have some on the go. And I found that I enjoyed the sparkling, the non-sparkling water just as much as I enjoyed the sparkling water. I think it was a big thing for my brain to get over drinking sodas years ago. First, I went from regular sodas to diet sodas, which turns out isn't a really a good way to do that because these diet sodas just make you crave more sugar. And they're full of other garbage. It's even worse sometimes than the sugar. But then I went from diet sodas to sparkling waters. And then uh, once I got away from the flavored sparkling waters and went to straight mineral water, yeah, I was drinking a lot of bai too, but that's because the flavor was there and I wanted that. I craved the bai, but I didn't crave the sparkling water. Once I got rid of the bai drinks, then I decided that my body just got used to not having all that sugar and being able to have something that wasn't flavored at all became normal. Adding the salt, however, had brought back the flavor that I wanted. And now I enjoy regular water just as much as I do sparkling water. It's an amazing transformation going from a straight soda drinker all the time to being able to enjoy just water and adding some salt to it because it's so much better for my body and it's so much more refreshing and it's not poisoning me. That process took a period of years, but hopefully you don't have to go through so much to make that transition. It is hard to kick an addiction. Ah, that's just right. Then what I'll do is I'll take these little bottles, like I used this one up in the, the car last time. So I'll take that one. Now these are supposed to be really fine salt when you buy them like that. I don't know if this gets as fine as the salt that I bought that way because this looks much more coarse when it's ground up than the uh, salt that was in these containers. A little tricky. I need a bigger, uh, what do you call this thing, funnel. So don't make mistakes that I make. <laughs> make sure your funnel is clean and dry before you start putting your salt in but I'm not gonna shake this out of the bottle anyway. I'm just gonna take the whole lid off and I put about half of this bottle usually into a, a small thing of water that I might buy on the road, one of those 500 milliliters. So one bottle of this would be enough for two of these where I could put half in for one of those. But that way I've got my salt ready to go. And I keep some in the car all the time. Keep it in both vehicles. And it's got a little shaker on there, but it's so tiny, <clears throat> and since I'm gonna use so much of it, it's much easier just to take the cap off and pour in what I need. So there you go, Redmond Sea Salt. 
at the moment I don't have a deal with Redmond to uh, get a discount on salt, but I'm hoping that by the time you see this video, there'll be a link in the description that does have that code. So be sure to check out that link in the description below. I'll have the link there either way, whether or not I have my code or not. Sirloins, sirloins. I'm trying to eat the cheaper meats. Just so spoiled on those ribeyes and New York strips. I mean, if you're gonna eat one thing, you gotta eat the best. However, I am looking forward to digging into some more lamb chops. The thing I like about lamb chops is they are a good bit cheaper per pound than most of the steaks I eat, and they are just as good as the best steaks I have. Also, lamb chops are always grass-fed. I don't know of any lambs that eat grain, at least that's what I've heard. I could be wrong on that, but from what I hear about lamb chops is they are grass-fed. They eat grass. I don't know if they eat corn. Maybe they're always grass-fed. I'll have to look deeper. Somebody said that. I don't want to just say that definitively and find out I was wrong. Lamb chops. So here we are gonna get some lamb chops ready to go in. So I know I, I like the idea of salting these uh, and letting them sit overnight, but I never have time for it. Plus, I'm happy with the way they come out this way, so I'm not gonna complain. I know there's all these connoisseurs out there who want you to do everything the perfect way, but I just don't do it that way. And I look at it this way. If you don't keep it simple, you won't stick with it. If you keep adding too much to what you have to do, you're going to stop doing what you need to do. And that's stay on the diet. Stick with what's working. And this is working great for me. I feel like a whole different person. A lot of people say I look like a whole different person. Well, I am happy about that. Go ahead and see if we can get them all in there. It's like putting a little jigsaw puzzle together in here. Well, I won't be able to fit all of them. Going to get darn close though, so I'm going to be too short. Lamb chops tend to be a little better, more rare, so I'm going to start these off at 12 minutes. We'll see how those come out. All right, let's check these lamb chops out. Yeah, let's take a closer look. What, what are they? Mm. That would taste great. You know what? This may be just right. Let's check the temperature on them, but that's how they look. 135 degrees. Let's see what that is good for lamb. Beef, lamb, same thing. So we're talking medium rare, right at the edge of medium rare and rare. And because we may have to reheat some of these, I think I'm going to leave them like that. Let me try the rest. Yeah, that's going to work out good. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so 12 minutes was good for however many lamb chops that was. It's roughly two two-pound packages, less two pieces, but still there was a little bit more than two pounds. So we'll say four pounds of lamb chops, 12 minutes at 370 degrees. Comes out medium rare, if that's the way you want yours. Yeah. And from what I hear, that's the way to eat them. Mm. From what I taste, that's the way to eat them too. Mm. Let's check another one. I'm gonna check them all. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So when you got an odd number like that and you wind up with two left to cook, you're gonna do a little bit less time. I'm gonna start with seven minutes. We'll see how those come out with a little less time since you're just doing a couple. And for those of you who just want to make a little bit at a time, this will be good information too. All right, so our timer just went off for eight minutes. Let's see how we're doing. I can tell by looking at them, they're done. <clears throat> they look like they're more done than the first batch was. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those away. Yeah, just, just perfect. I can see by the blood coming out of the holes where the fork is, very little. Just enough to be medium rare. Just to double check. Actually a little higher. <laughs> 150 degrees. So they're cooked properly. So we'll put these away until we're all hungry again, which for me may not be very long. Lamb chops. Quick question for those of you who watched my last video and I talked about monetization. And I had mentioned that I am not planning to monetize my channel. 
But after getting quite a few comments suggesting that I do monetize, I thought I'd go ahead and ask the rest of you. What do you think? Should I monetize or not monetize? Do you think it's going to affect my videos in a negative way? I've seen mixed results when I've looked at these things myself on YouTube, and I would really like to do this for a living. I'd like to be able to make this information available for you and do this instead of having to search for something else to take up all my time so I could spend more time home with my family. So let me know what you think by putting your comment in the comments saying either monetize or don't monetize. Keep it simple so I can find them all quickly. If you have other comments to make, go ahead and make those separately. Well, I'm back again making some more lamb chops ready to put in the fryer. So we'll do those again at 370 for 12 minutes and hopefully they'll come out just like they did yesterday. I didn't need all the ones from yesterday yet, but I only got a few left in the bowl, so I'm gonna go ahead and have some ready for later. Wanted to talk about a few things. One, the keto flu is starting to go away, which is really nice because it had me concerned for a while, just starting it over again at all. It was a bit upsetting, but it's nice to see I'm getting back to normal. And oh, I went today to get some blood work done. So we'll find out in a week how that goes. Hopefully we'll have it on the end of this video. So come the results on that, I should have the results of three blood work tests. The one five months before I started the diet, and then one that I did two months after starting the diet, and then this will be <clears throat> officially six months on Lion Diet. And I'm excited to tell you about something we're doing tomorrow. We are going down to Big Mo's Cattle Ranch. We are going to go down to a local rancher here in South Georgia and see their process for doing grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And also look into the process of buying a half steer or a whole steer and seeing how that comes out. But I'm looking forward to sharing that with you because I'm excited about it. So the alarm just went off for my lamb chops, 12 minutes, ready to go. We'll double check a little closer. Let's get our temperature probe. It's going to be in the 145 degree range. Keep it nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and put these away. So I saw a story today about how this plant based meat is being found to not have the same nutritional value as meat, which we already knew. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the link with you for that new story on that study on the plant-based protein or plant-based meat products not having the same nutritional value as meat. Because uh, even though I'm still just a regular guy trying out a diet that has changed my life, like, <laughs> changed me into a whole different person. I'm also finding that I'm, I'm learning about a lot of things that I never would have thought of if it wasn't for this diet. And I feel like I got in on it just the right time to be able to share this information. I know many of us, many of the viewers here are either already on a carnivore diet or are thinking about doing a carnivore diet. And you come to me for understanding, so I'm gonna keep digging into the details for you. And we'll see how that goes. I was so glad to have this in the truck when I got out of my doctor's appointment today doing that blood work. I tell you, I had to wait till 12.15. And this morning, I was not ready for a intermittent fast, but I had to do one today. I actually had some of those lamb chops with me at the appointment in my truck waiting for me to when I get out, so I had something to eat immediately because I was ready to eat. And a big thank you to all my viewers who went to carnivorecrisps.com and made their first order using my promo code Dante and getting 10% off your order because they are now officially sponsoring my videos. If you haven't tried them, go there now. All right, now that I finally got a break from that damn chicken crowing all the time, let's talk about blood work. As you can see in the left column, I have put... Uh, the results that I got back in August of last year. And I started the diet this year in January. So that was what, September, October, November, December, January, five months before I started the diet. Some of these numbers, it's really hard to make heads or tails of what to do with them. 
but basically I can say I talked to my doctor who specialized in nutrition before he became a general practitioner. And one of the things I'm thankful about this doctor is that he at least admits that there's more disinformation about nutrition than there is information about nutrition. And that most people are talking and don't know what they're talking about. Well, I'll go ahead and say right now, I don't know what I'm talking about on this blood work, but I can tell you that He's happy with my results, and he still says, keep doing what you've been doing. And now that I've finally talked to him about the diet that I'm on, he's encouraging of it. So that was encouraging to me because most people say their doctors are discouraging of such a diet. So I'm very happy with that. Some key points to pull up, point out. He talked about my kidney function here in the first highlighted area, the EGFR. Uh, NAA stands for non-African American. And I didn't realize that my kidney function was so low, but I knew back then that my kidneys weren't producing or doing as well as they should because my urine stream wasn't what it should be. He pointed out when I was there yesterday that the steady increase in kidney function is a very good sign as I still am approaching normal range, which he said was above 90. So to see it increasing by more than 10% each time was very encouraging, especially with people saying that kidney function might be a problem. Not really a big standout, but the sodium level and the potassium level. One of the things I did like is that even before and after doing a lot of salt, that those levels stayed the same. And I had a lot of people saying that you're not going to have enough potassium for some reason. Total protein stayed about the same. Actually went down a little bit, which is surprising but still in the same range, not really that big of a deal. Total bilirubin. This was interesting because this was the number that back in August of last year had my gastroenterologist a little concerned. Although my general practitioner doctor seems to be less worried because he says until it gets to 2.0, it's not really a big concern. However, I think it was approaching that 2.0 and that has been reversed still in the normal range since starting the diet. And then the last one I think that was a big standout was the bad cholesterol, the LDL level. As you can see, I went from having a high level of bad cholesterol before starting the diet and a lower level after the first reading. They didn't read cholesterol this time. And the last one, the testosterone level, people have asked about my testosterone level. I don't think it's been an issue because anything above 827 is considered high, so I'm still in the high testosterone area. I had several people say that their testosterone went to crap after starting this diet, but I think there's some other factors involved in that. So overall, this is the blood work. You can make, uh, make of it what you will. I would sure like to have the opinion of Dr. Sean Baker or Dr. Ken Berry so if they're on your contact list, go ahead and share this with them. Let them take a look and see what they think. So I'm sure there are other things that they can check for on, on uh, blood work that aren't listed here. I went with whatever my doctor requested. Um, I asked them to check the testosterone the last two times. But all in all, the, the most important thing I can say is that I have a nutrition-focused doctor. Uh, he didn't recommend any nutrition for me, but his focus was nutrition. I think that maybe he's a little restricted in what he can say and can't say. But I figured I'd go ahead and show you all the numbers and let you have at it. Say whatever you want to say about it. I'm happy with the results. One of the amazing things that I noticed on my blood sugar uh, check when I went for my last uh, lab work is that my sodium level was exactly the same before I started adding salt to everything as to when after I started adding salt to, same, to everything. My blood, sh blood sugar? No. My sodium level was exactly the same in my blood... Ugh. When I got my blood work back in October, or when was it? Eight. What is eight? August? Yeah. When I got my blood work back in August of when I got my when I got my blood work back in August of 2020, my sodium level was I believe 78 or 60 or something like that. 
Anyway, the number, what the hell is the number? Let as well have the number. I need a bigger funnel. Oh, there's water in there. <laughs> that was dumb. I shouldn't have done it with water in it. Uh, but anyway, we'll figure it out. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about. What was it? Damn, see this is why I need to remember to talk about these things while I am thinking about it. Thinking about it. Was it? I'll think of it in a minute. Hopefully I can remember what I was going to say to you. <laughs>